and the recording is starting now. Um, this morning, our heavy metal tour guides are Ponzi, and I will let them introduce themselves here. If you need help at all uh, throughout the presentation, please use the chat button. Um, again, if you didn't hear the directions for today, um, the top right hand corner of your screen, the view button, click that and choose speaker view so you get the best view of today's presentation. And with that, I give it away to Micah. Okay. Let me hit the screen share button. Okay, can everybody see the PowerPoint? Looks good, thank you. Okay, perfect. Uh, so my name is Mike, I work for Ponzi North America. I've been working with Ponzi for about four years now, um, originally from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, and and I, I went to college at Finlandia University, which is also up there. Um, which is how I initially got started with Ponzi North America. Um, and then Diane, are, are you with us? Um, yep, I'm here. Okay. Um, my name is Diana Olkowski. I'm the marketing coordinator. I've been with Ponzi for 15 years and I'm also from Upper Michigan, um, around Houghton Hancock, Michigan. And uh, welcome, welcome to Ponzi today. All right, thank you, Diana. Um, so just to give you guys a brief intro into Ponzi. So Ponzi is a forest machine company concentrating on sales service, manufacturing and technology related to cut to length forest machines and services. Um, now some of our competitors, they make equipment for different styles of logging in the industry. Um, that's not us. We, we generally focus strictly on cut to length um, we feel that economically, it's the future of logging. We also believe that environmentally and taking care of the environment, that this method of logging is, is the future. Uh, so this is just to give you guys a good scale of where we are at globally. Um, Ponzi's currently in over 40 countries uh, worldwide. Um, and our biggest markets are Sweden, Russia, Finland, and then after that, there's some smaller markets that are still rather big in Germany, France, Canada, uh, as well as the United States. So one of the cool things about Ponzi, and I'll give you guys some time to, to read this slide though, um, is that it's still based in the small town of Vierama, Finland, where it was initially founded in 1970 which is, is somewhat rare for such a large company to still be based in a small town where its roots are. So that's, that's really cool. Um, over 1,700 employees work for Ponzi globally. 80% uh, of the machines are exported. Um, another thing I wanna highlight is the fourth bullet point down. Um, there's a, a company called Epic that Ponzi owns that takes care of the electronic component manufacturer, the, the components that help our machines um, run essentially. Um, and again, we're, we're in over 40 different countries. Okay, so the, these are our Ponzi, Ponzi values, honesty, innovation, Ponzi spirit, uh, as well as customer closeness. These are sort of the guiding principles of our company. Um, and it's important that these guide our, our company as well as that each employee that works for Ponzi shares these beliefs at the top of their, their own list. Um, the one is the Ponzi spirit. Uh, to explain that to people who maybe aren't familiar with it, I would say it's a shared belief that all employees are on the same page, that everything we do is for the customer, uh, and that the customer is is family. And that's something that sets us apart a lot from our different competitors. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit into the Ponzi history, we wanted to show this picture, um, this to just show you why there was such a demand for the equipment that Ponzi was going to create. 
Um, this video shows you how hard it was logging, hard conditions, hard work. Um, they didn't, everything was man powered. Um, just, just a really difficult situation for making a, a strong profit while logging. Um, the picture on the left then being the first Ponzi that was rolled out of that small little shop on the right, um, which is actually still there, which is very cool. That, that shop is just down the road from our current factory, which you will, will see later. Um, but when you, when you look at that picture of that first Ponzi, you understand now it's just one man in there working, um, which is what made these machines so successful. Um, so this is a video we wanted to share. Um, it's nine minutes. Um, just a heads up, it it is all in Finnish, um, but there are subtitles, so yes, you will have to read. Um, but uh, the people speaking in the video are the sons of, or two of the sons, of the founder, Anri Vidgren, who passed away back in uh, 2010. So I hope you enjoy. There should be sound. I don't know if anybody else um, can hear the sound, but I don't hear it on my end. Tony, did we lose Micah? Um, he's still showing up. 
Um, but um, sometimes. Hello. Is there, is there some issue? Yep. Yeah, I don't. Uh, we don't see the presentation anymore. Okay. I am. Let's just skip the video and move on. If you can okay. share your screen. Yep, that's I, I am. Um, so at the bottom of your screen, uh, the button with the arrow up. If um, there you go, it's all good. We can see your screen again. Perfect. You got this. Kind of. <laughs> it went back to um, a black screen with Diana's name on it. Um, your yeah, I see that. Yep. Your Ponzi screen came up for a moment, though. Um, Well, should we move on with the tour? We certainly can. It may have been a connection issue. Um, he would yeah, have I'm to not stop sharing his screen for a moment. Okay, um, and then you can turn your camera on you and you're in the center. You're good to go. All right. Well, welcome to Ponzi North America, um, our headquarters um, for the USA and North America. We're at 4400 International Lane in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. It's a beautiful fall day, sun is shining. And let's go take a, a walk inside. We have about 40 employees that are working in this location. And um, we are not allowing any of our customers into our building uh, because of the COVID, but that's why we have this virtual presentation. So you walk into the front door and you can see, uh, this is our parts department. This is where the customers would come in and, and get their parts. and. This is our uh, receptionist, uh, Sarah. And here you have the, the parts department, uh, Chris and Bill. Hard at work, taking a lot of phone calls and getting parts for the, for the customers. We have a drop box outside that the customers can still come in and pick up their parts. And we're heading back to shipping and receiving. Is where they package up the customers. We have customers all over the USA and parts get shipped to Canada also. And there's Jay, he's back there working hard. And if you see these um, drawers here, they're called the Vidmars. We have a lot of parts that are stored, many, many thousands of parts. So if we leave shipping and receiving, we're gonna head to the shop. It might get so. Here's some guys testing out the crane. They probably made some repairs on that. Uh, the harvester head is currently off. They must be making some repairs on that also, but. They're getting that machine in tip top shape. So let's go talk with one of our service technicians. Uh, we have about, uh, I think it's 30 employees that are in the service department. We have field service technicians that go and visit the customer out in the field at their job site to help with their machines. We have service technicians here in the shop uh, we have service writers that help um, 
invoice and, and prepare parts for the technicians. We have a service manager. And this guy here is Brent. And I will let him tell you a little bit more about what he's doing and maybe a little bit about his, his background. Good morning. My name is Brent Bowman. Um, I've been working at Ponzi here in Rhinelander for just under 10 years. Um, background, I grew up um, in Merrill, Wisconsin. Uh, spent a lot of time between grade school, middle school, high school, working and living out at my relative's dairy farm. It's probably where I got the bug for fixing things. Um, it's just a, I guess, satisfaction of having a piece of equipment that's broken. You get to take it apart, fix it, and it works again when you're done. Um, I went to North Central Technical College in Wassa, um, got an associate's degree. It was a two-year course in agriculture, power and equipment technician. Uh, it was a basic course in hydraulics, engines, electrical, reading diagrams, schematics. Um, and started up here and uh, get to work on forestry equipment. Here we have uh, a 2015 uh, Buffalo forwarder, or Buffalo King forwarder. A uh, used piece of equipment that is ours. Uh, we go through it front to back, make sure everything is functioning like it should. Um, from all the switches, making sure the windshield wipers work. Uh, we replace the crane and pillar, uh, wear item from loading trees off to the side all the time, all the weight, starting to get a little play. So we make everything as close to brand new factory functioning as we can. So when the next customer gets the machine, it's uh, ready to go and they can work without having to worry about any breakdowns. Um, but, uh, Mechanicking, I guess you could almost compare it to being a doctor. Um, the machine comes in when it's sick and uh, we make it better. <laughs> so that's the basics. Um, this one has almost 10,000 hours on it. Uh, when used machines come in, that's about the time range. It's uh, five years old. Um, we'll be working on this machine. It's been here almost a month already that we've had between one to two people working on it. Um, probably another two weeks and it should be ready to go to the woods. Anything else we can? Uh, do you see what you're currently working on? Um, currently, I just finished up the windshield wipers weren't working, uh, weren't spraying right. Uh, we had some blocked lines, um, bad switch in the armrest, and um, a lot of investigating, troubleshooting, but that's what makes each day different and uh, kind of exciting. You get to do something different every day. How about some other tools? Um, tools, we have everything from hand wrenches to hammers, screwdrivers, um, lots of sockets, small electrical tools, uh, wire crimpers. Um, it's a, a good variety of tools, nothing huge. Usually the, the shop will provide all the heavy duty stuff that we need. Um, but, uh, it's, uh, all right, there you go. Thank you. Can you get back? All right. We can watch your work for a little bit. All right, we'll let Brent work a little bit and we'll watch him. And um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Um, yeah, Diana, I'm back in if you would like me to finish my PowerPoint. Yep, let's start that in just a little bit. We'll, we'll let Brent work here and... Um, That'll work. All right. So Brent is currently working on a forwarder. Uh, we make harvesters and forwarders, and that's that's the only thing we make. Um, 
just the, the two pieces of rubber tired forestry machines. Uh, the harvesters, they have a harvester head where they drive up to the tree, they grip the tree, cut it, um, uh, cuts off the limbs and cuts the, the log into, into lengths. And then this forwarder here, it has the bunk, you can see towards the right side of the screen. And they put the cut to length uh, logs in the bunk and then they carry it to the roadside. And that is where the log truck comes and haul, uh, loads the log truck and they haul it to the mill. And actually we have, I'm gonna take you back a stall here. And we have a harvester. This is the Scorpion King. This is one of our most popular harvesters. And you can see here, I'll walk back by the harvester head. And this is a H7. And I think in, in Micah's presentation, he can show you the different harvester heads. But you can see the feed motors and these very sharp teeth that are right here. And that helps feed the, the log through the harvester head. And you can see that the saw is down here. And this is the harvester. And here's a different angle from, from the forwarder here. You can see the, the bunks and you can see someone else is working on some repairs. I didn't give him a warning that I was going to be filming him, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go back by Brent. And if anybody has any questions related to the service or the repair, now would be a good time to ask. And then we can turn it over to Micah. So if anybody has any questions, let us know. You can always write them in the chat box and I can read them for you if you'd like. Um, if you think of something after the fact, we can always ask questions again at the end. Yep. He's happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a question from MHLT. Do you make the machines? Yes, we make the machines. Uh, we do not make the machines here in Rhinelander. They, all of our machines are made in Finland. And then from Finland, um, the factory, they get on a train and they go to the port, which is, I believe in Helsinki, that's the capital of Finland. And then they are put on a boat and it takes about six weeks to get to the Baltimore port. And then from there, um, they get on a truck and they are uh, trucked to one of our locations. So uh, it's quite the process and, uh, but all the manufacturing is done in Finland. Good question. Yeah, very good question, thank you. Any other questions? And then, yep, we can ask more at, at the end. Great. Go ahead, Micah. Okay, I have. Oh, well, we're waiting for that to pop up. Um, we had a question. Um, do you send people to Finland? Uh, yes, we do send people to Finland. Uh, we do a lot of training. Um, and um, we, we have uh, management meetings and parts training, service training. Um, so there are a lot of trips to Finland. Um, now that we've had COVID, it's been a lot of virtual meetings and virtual trainings. Um, I, we don't see us traveling uh, a ton after COVID. I mean, there'll still be this, the trainings and, and 
um, in-person meetings, but I think a lot of it will now be, be virtual. But we have a lot of people that, that come from Finland to here um, to also perform training. And our president, uh, his name is Pekka Ruskinen. He is from Finland. Uh, 20 years ago, he came over uh, to be an operator trainer. And that is um, when someone buys the machines, we send out a trainer to go and help them um, learn how to operate the machine. Uh, some guys, uh, they just need a little bit of updates or figure out what's new with the machines. But then there are other guys that um, brand new to the machines and they might need a couple days of uh, operator trainer. But Pekka Ruskinen came here, uh, he was gonna be here for three months uh, training our customers. And now 20 years later, he, he's our president and um, and makes lots of trips to Finland. I think he's been back and forth over a hundred times. So a uh, big connection with Finland and we are very close to the factory, uh, very close to the owners. That's one thing that's unique with our company is um, I have one of the owner's uh, phone numbers in my phone um, and, and we're just, a marketing person in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. So that's that's one of the very neat things uh, that that our company um, provides. Cool. All right. The next question was, how old do you have to be to work at Ponzi? Um, well, you have to go to um, if you want to be a service technician, you need to go to a, a technical college. Um, but I, I guess the the rule of thumb would probably be 18. Um, it, we have other positions um, like our our um, parts guys. Um, some of them have went to school. Some of them haven't um, to college. Um, our accountant uh, he went to accounting school. We have an office manager and a financial manager. Um, they all went to. To college after work, after high school, um, I went to Finlandia University, got got a four year degree. Um, so it depends on the position, depends on the job, but um, eighteen would probably be the youngest. Okay, all good questions. Yeah, very good questions. Um, it is still not allowing me to share my screen, so we might have to scrap it or. And that's okay too. Um, you guys could talk about um, some of uh, the things that were on it and that's totally fine. Yeah, de definitely. Um, in, and one thing I really wanted to touch, um, touch on is with our, our factory that we have over in Finland. Um, it's a, a bummer I can't show you a picture of it, um, but we, we can obviously email out a picture and stuff, but the fact that it's surrounded by beautifully maintained forests and a lot of times there's such a misconception that, um, you know, logging is just deforestation and it's not healthy for the forest, but that's actually the opposite. Um, and our equipment is extremely economic or environmentally friendly. Um, and for in Finland has some of the most managed forests in the world, meaning they're cut when they're supposed to be cut and then they're allowed to let grow again. Um, also too, with our factory, the top surface on the roof of our factory actually helps combat pollution as pollution goes over and it traps pollution. And then as, as the, as the rains, that rain will help dilute that pollution. So um, definitely huge steps to help the environment. That's a huge focus of, of us and our, our equipment as well. Do we have any other questions or? Marcia's question. All right. Go ahead, Marcia. How long does it take for Finland to assemble the truck? Um, so they're currently doing, I believe it's six units per day. So that would be six units coming out of the machine or uh, coming out of the plant per day. Okay, there was a question in the chat that I missed. Um, do you offer job shadowing? 
Um, there has been uh, a few people in our, our Gladstone branch that I know of that have come in more as a part-time intern, um, as well as I know about Minnesota. Um, I don't know, Diana, if you could speak more to if we've had people come in and, and more so shadow. Um, we we haven't really, but um, it's not out of the question to, to actually do that. Um, if somebody is interested in, in mechanics, but not really sure if that's what they want to do or not. Um, I know we wouldn't allow anybody right now with with COVID going on. Uh, we're trying to do our best to keep our staff healthy and and keep our shops open for um, keep our customers up and running. Um, but if if somebody wanted to come and and see um, what it's all about, I'm I'm sure we could work something out. More questions? What is the average salary? For a service technician? Um, Doesn't say. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it's, I think, all over the board, I think. Um, depending on your experience, um, you can make between 15 and $30 an hour. So there's quite, quite a, a gap, but um, all depends on experience. I see Mercer, did you have a question? Yep. Do you guys use your own engines? Uh, so our, our engines are actually made by Mercedes. So that is a, a component of the machine that we do not manufacture. Good question. Yeah, these are all terrific questions. How many Keep plans the questions coming? Because um, we're sorry about the, the technical difficulties here. <laughs> um, maybe we can ask them, um, how many plants do you have? We saw that picture in your um, presentation, but um, how many do you have total? Um, you, in, you mean in the United States, how many branches? Or uh, in the United States, we have one in Oregon. We have one in Minnesota one in Wisconsin, and then two in Michigan, one in Upper Michigan, and then Lower Michigan. Um, but the only plant where manufacturing is done at is the plant in Vierama, um, and then the electro electronic components with Epic, which is also in Finland, which is a, which is a company that Ponzi owns. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Um, Gonna share my screen here and allow this to come up so you all can see a little bit more about Ponzi. I don't know if you can see that. Yep, we can see it. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Yeah. And uh, actually you, you can see that uh, aerial picture of the factory that I was referring to and see how much um, natural beautiful forest is surrounding uh, the biggest, most modern forest manufacturing plant in the world. And Diana and Micah, please tell me if you want me to click on anything in specific and I would be happy to do that. Looks like you sponsor a hockey team. Can you tell us about yep. that? Um, so there's two teams in Finland. Um, one team, I believe, plays in the second division of professional hockey in Finland, and then the other one plays in the first division. Um, and we sponsor both both teams. That's pretty um, cool. and, and we have a number of sponsors as well. Um, we sponsor a professional boxer, um, Joey Spencer, who I now believe is 11 and0, hasn't lost. Um, we sponsor a young man named Parker Retzlaff, who is a Rhinelander native. Um, and he's 
an aspiring NASCAR driver, um, recently did some online racing. Uh, it's called iRacing, and he, I believe, took first place over current NASCAR drivers. So his future future is extremely bright. Very neat. Um, you have events here. Can you tell us about what events you attend or have? Uh, maybe Logging Congress? Yeah, so our, our biggest event here stateside is the Great Lakes Logging Expo, which happens every year um, and has typically transitioned every other year from Wisconsin to Michigan. Um, but it's, it's a great event for not only us to grow our brand and inform people about our products, um, but the other half is to give back to our customers. Um, our customers mean everything to us. Their success is our success. Um, and so it's a great event to get people from overseas, obviously not doing this COVID stuff, but um, to get people here from, from, the, from the factory and get that one-on-one -on -one contact with them and our customers um, to truly make them feel like they're part of the family. Can anyone attend that? Yeah. I'm not sure what the uh, the entry fee is or not, but yeah, it's open to the public and you can just register and go in and go look at all types of equipment. Great. Is there anything on your website that you'd like me to um, click or show them? I don't know if it would work, but if you went to the YouTube and looked up, um, Ponzi history video. I don't know if that video would come up or not. Um, I think that was on your home page, and I can click that for you. Oh, okay. This one? Yep. Let's try it. No, I don't hear the sound. Yeah, it must be the same issue as earlier. Yep. But th this year is the company's 50th um, year. Um, it started in 1970. Um, and being in the United States, it's our 25th year anniversary from um, being in the States. So it's it's quite an accomplishment and um, it, it's, it's something to be proud of. Uh, when we first started in, in the United States, people were thinking that we wouldn't make it very long. And, and now 1,500 machines later, we've sold about 1,500 machines and we're going strong and business is, is good and um, we have a bright future. So. Cut, the cut to length uh, is the future and um, just proud to be a part of, of the Ponzi team. Um, I think we can... Isä oli pieneltä pienviljelijäperheen tilalta kotosi ja työnteko on alkanut jo ennen koulun lähtöä. Eli kun he oppi lapsena tekemään navettatöitä, peltotöitä, polttopuita, niin Einarillekin tuli hyvin äkkiä sen käsitys, että kaikki työ on tärkeää ja se pitää tehdä hyvin. Einari käytti paljon sanontoja ja, ja, ja niillä selvitti, niin kuin mitä, mitä yritys on. Yksi, yksi niistä on se, että koneiden käyttäjät ovat parhaita asiantuntijoita ja heitä kannattaa kuunnella. Ja, ja tämä pohjautui ihan suoraan siihen Einari oma urakoitsija taustaan 60-luvun loppuun, kun hänellä oli kahdeksan erilaista konetta markkinoilta. Ja, ja, ja niissä ilmenneet ongelmat oli tosi isoja, mutta aina hän koitti. antaa palautetta, että saisiko sitä parannettua. Ja kun sitä ei tullut sitä vastausta sieltä konevalmistajilta, niin ei sitä sitten enää pitkä askel ollut, kun hän oli itse jo konetta valmistamassa ja hän muisti sen tunteen kyllä niin, niin vahvasti, että hän pystyi sitä koko ajan kyllä kaikille sanomaan, että, että kyllä se asiakas siellä koneen puikossa pystyy antamaan varmasti sitä neuvoa, mitä me, mitä me tarvitaan koneen kehittämisessä. Sitten myös siskomiehen majalla tehtiin tuossa ajatus, että pitää olla semmoinen kone, että se kestäisi edes yhden talven. Niin me tehtiin sitten pyöräkuorma ja osista ensimmäinen kone ja se oli 
69 vuonna valmis ja se on vuoden ajan yli 70 vuonna soittivat tähän puusta, että tehdään muillekin, että se on eniten ajan ja vähintään hieman. Sitten se ensimmäisen koneen teko kesti 9 kuukautta normaali synnytys ja sitten kun se ajettiin tehtaasta, minä vielä sain ajoa ulos, niin ykkösen pani päälle, niin se ei mennyt peku taaksepäin. Niin siinä oltiin vähän totisena, vaikka me siitä kisseleeksi. Siinä taustalla Enarilla oli tämmöistä maa, maanviljelijän uskoa siihen huomiseen, eli huonoja vuosia tulee, mutta että kyllä niitä hyviäkin on tulossa. Mikä sitten porukkaa veikin sitten että tiukkojen vuosien yli sitä aikalailla 70-luvun alusta lähtien? Sitten me varsinainen läpimurto tehtiin 83 vuonna, kun ne aina moitti, että raskaat metsät on, että särkevät metää, niin me tehtiin sitten koko eturunko alumiinista ja, ja silloin me ruvettiin nimmeen Suoma ja ostajia ja kasvattia. 86 vuonna tehtiin en, ensimmäinen kooraharvesteri ja seuraavana vuonna harvesterin osturi ja sitten tuli mittalaite ja 80 Kahdeksan vuoden lopussa joulukuun 16. päivänä näin sen sitten interpolaattori. Yhdeksänkymmentän luvullahan sitten oli heti alku kovat kasvuvuodet ja Otti tuon 93 vuonna ja sitten rupesi kyselyjä tulemaan ulkomailtakin. 94 perustettiin ensimmäinen tytäryhtiö Ruotsiin ja sitten mentiin 95 vuonna pörssiin ja sitten perustettiin tytäryhtiöt UK ja Ranska ja USA. Ja pörssistä mitään suhteen ne rahat enemmän siihen kansainvälistymissä ja sitä ei tehdä, sitä nyt on kasvettu. Ja 23 eri maahan nyt toimitetaan koneita kahdeksalla eri kielellä ja sitten vielä kaikki tonset tänäkin päivänä tehdään vieremmällä samoissa maisemissa kuin sillä 34 vuotta sitten. Oli todella vahvaa kasvua ja talous oli kovassa vedossa, mutta sitten sanotaan, että 2000 8, 2009 yksi viikko oikeastaan käytännössä, kun markkinat romahti alta, että rahoitukset hävisi koneita, mitkä oli menossa asiakkaille ja kovia liikkeitä jouduttiin tekemään, että tuli irtisanomisia ja lomautuksia ja tehtään kapasiteetti oli noin 25 prosenttia varmaan vuonna 2009 ja esimerkkinä esimerkiksi 2009 mentiin kesälomille, niin tilauskanta oli seitsemän konetta, että reilun päivän tuotanto, niin siinä ei hirveästi ollut oikein Hymy herkässä kellään. Ja... 2010-luvun alussa Einarin pois mentyä, niin mietittiin paljon porukalla sitten, että millä, millä ponsse jatkuu. Ja siinä yhteydessä sitten tuota, nostettiin niitä Einarin ajatuksia ja oikeastaan voisi sanoa, että suunnannäyttäjiä ja kulmakiviä sitten ja viisi löytyi sitten ja niitä ollaan käytetty. Ponsse arvoja ovat rehellisyys, innovatiivisuus. Ponsse henki, joka pitää sisällään sitten tasavertaisuuden kaikkien kesken ja asiakaslähtöisyys. Tuli Fox ja kahdeksanpyöräinen Erko tuli uusia tuotteita ja sitten siihen jatkumona tuli Scorpion, joka taas antoi meille kyllä taas ihan uuden askeleen, että saatiin teknologiajohtajuutta markkinoilla, uskottavuutta ja nimeä. Tavallaan kiinnostusta herätti semmoisessa piirissä, mitkä aikaisemmin ei ollut niin hirveästi kiinnostunut Ponssen toiminnasta. Tavallaan, että iso juttu siinä oli, että lähdettiin tekemään kuljettajalle sitä konetta, että kuljettaja oli keskiössä. Ja ehkä pieniä teknisiä haasteita meillä oli tiettyjen komponenttien kanssa, mutta Epekin oston jälkeen päästiin itse tekemään suoraan. Ja esimerkiksi Scorpionin tekeminen varmasti olisi ollut paljon haastavampi ilman Epekkiä. Että iso, iso tekijä sieltä, sieltä kautta meille. Visoni ajokone puolelle yhtä. Kova on mullistus kuin Scorpionin hakkuukoneiden puolella, mutta tavallaan ollaan hyvin erilaisessa tilanteessa. Että tuota, kone näyttää ulkoisesti samanlaiselta kuin aikaisemmat konemallit, mutta sisältö on aivan erilainen. Eli CVT-ansiosta ajot ja polttoainetaloudellisuudet, huolettavuus on ihan eri tasolla ja kuormamme hallinta on ihan erilaista mitä aikaisemmin. Uskotaan kyllä, että koneista tulee samanlainen myyntivaltti, mitä Scorpion on ollut hakkuukoneiden puolella. Saatiin voitollisia vuosia siinä alle ja uskottiin tekemiseen 
sitten tavallaan lähdettiin lainassa tekemään tehtaalle. Ja selkeitä tavoitteita siinä oli, että haettiin tuottavuutta lisää ja mahdollista kapasiteettia, mutta myös turvallisuutta työntekijöille tuon. Että se oli iso, iso päätös tehdä 1,3 hehtaarin laajennus, mutta tota, kyllä huomataan ilolla, että niin investointi on ollut oikea. Tehas on kyllä varmasti maailman modernein metsäkonetehas, mitä löytyy tällä hetkellä. 2019 iso vuosi. Ensimmäisen kerran meillä on kaksi täyttä tuhatta koneita luovutettu, eli vuoden alussa oli 14 000 kone ja sitten loppuvuodesta 15 000 kone Venäjälle toimitukseen. Että tota, se on aika pitkä pätkä koneita peräkkäin, jos laitetaan tuohon. Ponsen koneilla hakataan vuosittain keskimäärin 240 miljoonaa kuutiota puuta. Se on valtava määrä ympäri maailmaa, mitä, missä Ponsse on mukana puun korjussa. Täytyy aina muistaa, että näillä koneilla tehtävä puunkorju on hyvin ympäristöystävällistä verrattuna esimerkiksi koko runkomenetelmän puunkorjuussa, missä on tela-alusteiset koneet, meillä on pyöräalusteiset koneet, pintapaineet on paljon pienemmät, plus sitten, että me liikutaan vain kahdella koneella verrattuna koko runkomenetelmän koneisiin, jossa on 3-4 eri konetta. Kasipyöräisillä koneilla ja vinssiyhdistelmällä sitten ympäristöystävällisyys on korostunut varsinkin jyrkissä rinteissä, että maaperä säilyy ihan eri tasolla, mitä Kilpailevalla menetelmällä toimiminen siellä ja kyllä me uskotaan vakaasti, että me ollaan se paras kumppani siellä, jos halutaan pysyä kilpailussa matkassa. Ponsse edustaa tavaralajimenetelmän puunkorjuuta ja tässä otetaan huomioon se loistava seikka, mitä meillä Suomessa ymmärrettiin jo 1800-luvun lopulla. Eli kun on reaaliset resurssit metsävaroja, niin meidän pitää pystyä optimoimaan jokaisen puun osa, jotta se palvelisi teollisuutta. Tämä Tavaraliimenetelmä, missä on viety hyvin pitkälle myös tämä logistiikka. Meillä on karttajärjestelmät koneissa. Me käytetään hyvin paljon älyä siihen, kuinka tämä koko puutavaraketjun logistiikka toimii täällä Suomessa. Niin tämä äly, mikä siinä on laitettu sisälle, se luo sen mahdollisuuden sille maailman ympäristöystävällisimmälle puunkorjuutavalle. 12 tytäryhtiötä tällä hetkellä ja 35 jälleen myy ja yli 40 eri markkinalla. Eli... Erittäin mielenkiintoinen markkinahan meillä on tässä menossa ja joka paikassa on oma kulttuuri ja monessa maassa on oma kielikin, että tuota, haasteita riittää kyllä ja tekemistä. Perheomistuksessa oli 60 prosenttia osakkeista, mutta ehkä se tärkeämpi asia, että se henki on säilynyt perheyritysmaisena ja, ja, ja kyllä siinä se hyvä lupsakkuus ja savuolainen meininki meillä on ollut alusta lähtien ja se on ollut iso, iso tekijä tässä yhteisengen syntymisessä. Tulevaisuus näyttää nyt varsin hyvältä. Hyviä ihmisiä töissä ja henki on täällä. Ja... Ei kun mua alimmäärä. Okay. And I'll open it back up for any questions after the video there. I hope you guys heard everything okay. Yeah, the audio came through on my side, so. Good. Any other questions from students? Any chat questions that I missed during the video? Going once, going twice. Okay. All right, I wanna thank uh, Ponzi for being available today. Uh, Micah and Diana for um, braving this new virtual world of technology <laughs> to do the tour today. I know it was a little bumpy, but all good things are. So um, this uh, recording will be made available to everyone um, at the end of the week. And I want to thank everyone for joining today. And we hope to see you again tomorrow. Yeah, and, and thank you guys too for yep. letting us be a part of this. We really appreciated it. We hope you learned something. Yep, and I'd like to say uh, thanks to all of our service technicians that were in the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> and, and thank all, all, all the schools for, for participating. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you very much.